The women, the dick riders, you know the yes men. Nobody with the balls to say something to contest them. Okay guys, it's another Monday, which means it's another round of guessing Kanye West shenanigans. So editor, if you don't mind, can you show me what kind of drama Kanye's gotten himself into this past week? Oh. Oh dear god. Well guys, looks like we've reached peak insanity with the veteran rapper and now he's at the point of no return, regardless of his intentions. So let's take a very, very disappointing run through all the mess EA's gotten himself into and try to predict that this will make or break his future, which it probably won't, but still. <laughs> Alright, so I'm not gonna lie, I don't even know where to start. I mean, we got White Lives Matter at the fashion show, we got Kanye co-signing Candace Owens, ASAP Bar is a rapist back on this dick riding wave, and we got one of the worst Kanye interviews of the past 20 plus years I've been alive. Like, I legitimately don't know where Kanye is going or could go with all of this, but it mainly seems like he's just taking in the worst routes possible to keep himself in the spotlight. And the funny thing about it all is that he won't stop, and nor will people allow him to. His influence is far too strong to the point where it just fuels his idiocy, and he takes that idiocy and treats it like it's his genius master plan like how he did when he was dick riding Trump back in 2018. But I guess when it comes to this situation now, instead of him just advocating for controversial figures like how he did a couple years back, he's now became the main controversial figure with other controversial figures backing him, and it's all for reasons unknown. And people keep saying, oh he's just bipolar, or it's just his mental health, but hot take guys, I'm pretty sure Kanye has more than enough money and resources to get the help he needs, but instead in usual Kanye fashion he'd rather say everyone's wrong and place himself on a higher pedestal than where he was at before. I mean, I gave mental health was an important thing, but how long can you use that as an excuse for someone who can get the help but obviously doesn't give a shit to actually do so and instead would rather fuel his ego. Like let's take a look at this whole white lives matter debacle right? Like it's wild that he does this now when not even a month ago he was acting like the biggest advocate for black empowerment and black lives matter. I mean the dude was even crying on social media about his black kids and black fathers when he was getting sidelined by Kim Kardashian. But now the tables have turned. This nigga don't switch teams. This nigga did us dirtier than William O'Neill. And then of all the people you link up with you choose Candace Owens. The same nigga that thought Hitler's only problem was that he spread his power beyond Germany and not the countless slaughter of Jewish people because nah, he was going to make things run well. What? But at the same time, I'm not surprised because if you take a quick look at his Twitter recently, he has also proven himself to be pretty anti-Semitic, so there's that. Now let's not forget the god-awful interview Ye had with Tucker Carlson, which you could also call Kanye's worst impression of a Michael Jackson voice. I mean, there were so many moments from this interview I couldn't even be able to fit into my usual 4-5 to five minute segments. I mean, the dude says he wasn't stalking Kim and P when he moved next to them like he doesn't have a whole music video of him decapitating. Pete's head off, and then the constant harassment Ye dishes out on Instagram towards him while calling Pete out of his name. Like if adding all that together doesn't equate to stalking, then it at least has to equate to a grown man being extremely bitter. But I guess the good news throughout it all is that at least there are people who don't co-sign Kanye's idiocy, ranging from Gigi Hadid to Tremaine Emery, the creative director of the Supreme brand. And with Tremaine, it's definitely the most interesting because he laid out a big bombshell about the late Virgil Abloh and Kanye's relationship, basically saying over time it became fake and that Virgil didn't even want Ye at his actual funeral that was held at a completely different location because Kanye is just that much of a cunt. And it's crazy because there was a certain point in which Virgil was Kanye's fashion protege, but then he grew to being the next idol in the fashion industry, which I guess is something Kanye didn't like because apparently after he died, he instead went to shit talk him in private messages. But just because there are people that hate him doesn't mean that there aren't people that will still gargle his nutsack until the Yeezys come home, prime example being ASAP Bari, the disgraced member of the ASAP mob, full-time dick rider, and convicted rapist. And it seems that he's used his influence to get Kanye to shit talk ASAP Rocky on Instagram which now, for absolutely no direct reason, gave Ye another enemy. So there's that. But overall, I don't even know anymore, man. I mean, can I even be mad at Kanye at this point? I mean, sure, I'm pretty annoyed, but I feel like dishing out any form of emotion towards his shenanigans won't do anything to stop him, nor will it lower the bar any lower than it has been for a while for the longtime musician. And as long as he has his army of weird ass fans going 10 inches deep on his cock and balls, he's not gonna stop anytime soon to reflect on his actions. But that's just my rant for today. It's up to you if you care about Ye's controversy or not. I mean, it's not like I'd blame you if you didn't. But if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe as well, follow my IG and Twitter, and follow the R as well if you like the illustration. And on that note, I'll see you on Friday when I buy the Easy Brand for $2.50. Peace.